evening. I'm Joe Glover. And I'm Rich Fisher. Here is our top story tonight. Eyewitness News has learned a group of fundamentalist churches around the country have a pattern of abusing children. The abuse includes severe discipline. In one case, there was sadistic torture. And in another, it may have involved murder. As we've told you in a series of special reports this week exclusively on Eyewitness News, TV2 investigator Vince Wayne has learned the alleged child molestings at Washtenaw County's North Sharon Baptist Church appear to be part of this pattern of abuse. Vince joining us now with another of his special reports on Frank from the Pulpit. Vince. Rich, the leadership of the North Sharon Baptist Church was educated at a Bible college in Sherrillville, Indiana, run by Jack Hiles, a hellfire and brimstone preacher well known in fundamentalist circles. Over the last few years, Hiles has been a source of scandal and controversy for fundamentalist believers. Hiles has one son, David, who had his own ministry until he was run out of two churches due to scandals involving wives in his congregations. As you will see, the son of the famous preacher man is a suspect in something far more serious than adultery. David Hiles set out to follow in his father's footsteps, but his zest for women cost him his pulpit and his first marriage. When David left the Texas church in disgrace, he and his girlfriend, Brenda Stevens, moved to Bolingbrook, Illinois, with her two children by her first marriage. It wasn't long before her youngest son, 17-month-old Brent Stevens, came to the attention of abuse investigators. In 1985, they found him with a broken leg plus eight or nine bones in various stages of healing. Paul Cialino was a homicide investigator for the Illinois Department of Children and Family Services. He and his team fought, unsuccessfully, to keep Brent away from David and Brenda. I wasn't concerned his child was going to be abused again. I was concerned his kid was going to wind up dead. That was my concern. His concern was justified. A few months later, Brent Stevens was found dead in his crib. Due to bureaucratic bungling, an inconclusive autopsy was done at a hospital instead of the morgue. But at the inquest, David Hiles invoked his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. Brenda, the mother of the dead child, was a no-show. As for the status of the investigation... This case is an open case still today. And nothing's been done. Can anything be done? This Absolutely. It's a murder case. I would even go further and say that if I could get David and Brenda in a court of law, they'd both get convicted of murder. Without a doubt. I have a dead child with a history of abuse, and I have two people who are the only people who access that child at night. And I would almost bet that 12 of their peers would convict them on almost that evidence alone. And the power of God and the... The suspect's father, Jack Hiles, preaches a brand of religion that emphasizes the old adage, spare the rod, spoil the child. At North Sharon Baptist Church and Christian School, southwest of Ann Arbor, Hiles' style discipline put them in a 1989 lawsuit over the severe spanking of a student. The church settled the case out of court. The punishment victim was 17-year-old Stephen McIntosh, then 11, who says he was wrongly accused of a playground mishap. Mr. Palmer put his hands on my neck and held me down, and Mr. Tompkins propped his feet up against the back of mine to hold me there, and they spanked me. The spanking was so severe, the inflammation lasted 11 days. Like Jared Gubber used to attend the grade school in junior high run by Jack Hiles in Sherrillville, Indiana. The principals, when they got new paddles, they'd bring them into the chapel service uh, and show them to the kids, you know, like, hey, look what I got. They used a paddle that almost looked like a, I don't know, maybe an enlarged ping pong paddle. It was wooden, and it had holes in it, and they called it Big Red. At Calvary Baptist Church in Petersburg, Virginia, the Christian school principal, Daniel Gerald, was charged in 1984 with assault and battery against a 10-year-old. He had used a special wooden paddle. In at least one case, a pastor who had been trained in the Jack Heil system crossed the line from severe discipline to sadistic torture. And she was crying. This woman fears for her life and the lives of her children at the hands of a former pastor in a city near the desert region of the United States. We've changed her name and the name of the child victim as well. Sharon says the pastor tormented a 10-year-old boy named Bobby. Bobby's divorced mom believed the pastor could teach him some discipline. One example of the pastor's discipline was the time he put a friend's pet boa constrictor in the church baptistry. When the church was dark, he made Bobby strip naked, then get in the baptistry water. Then he pulled the ladders out, leaving the 10-year-old in the water with the giant snake. At this time, he realized he was trapped. He couldn't swim, he couldn't get out, and the ladders were pulled out, and he was in this baptistry with this snake. And left there while they stood laughing and howling about this for probably 15-20 minutes. 
What was Bobby doing while he was in the water with the snake? He was frantic, trying to get out, screaming, begging, help me, help me. Sharon says she didn't see the incident, but she heard the pastor frequently laugh and brag about that and other acts of torment inflicted on Bobby. Sharon says Bobby was subjected to physical torture, too. Well, one time on a desert trip, Bobby had been naughty and somehow had gotten the pastor angry at him. And so to punish him, he decided to put some hot peppers um, in his rectum. Another form of punishing Bobby um, was when he was naughty that the pastor would take the glass insert that went on top of a coffee table that he had and he would put his uh, put Bobby's penis down on the table and then lay the glass on top of that and um, push down on it or something to, to punish Bobby. To exert pressure on the glass right. on this little boy's genitals. Right. Sharon's stories of the abuse of Bobby have been corroborated by a young man who knew the pastor and Bobby. The last time he saw Bobby was when Bobby was 17. Bobby was playing with a G.I. Joe doll. He thinks Bobby had lost his mind. Another religious leader became famous for using special paddles and excessive discipline on children. His name was David Koresh. Tonight, Jack Hiles told the Associated Press the allegations in our reports are, quote, vicious lies, all of them. Hiles has not acknowledged our request for an interview. Tomorrow night at 11, the facts behind claims Hiles is running a cult without a compound. Rich, I have to believe you're getting a, a lot of reaction from this series of reports so far. Oh, tons of phone calls. Uh, some people saying they're glad we're doing it, but we're having an, an organized phone campaign that the Hiles Anderson students have conducted. These are some of the phone messages from uh, all over the country. People that haven't seen our report are calling in saying it's all vicious lies, and uh, it's interesting that people haven't seen the facts are just calling in with blind faith. It's like a cult. It sounds like a, an organized effort. Oh, it is an organized yeah. effort. These students have been told to call in. It's, it's organized. All right. More tomorrow, Vince. Sure. Thanks.